I'm Steph Strickland with GeekWire Studios. We are here at AWS reInvent 2024. And one of the things that we want to talk about, the buzzword for this particular segment, serverless. I am joined now by Kathleen Vigneault. She is the Vice President of Software Engineering at Capital One. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you, Steph? I'm great. Thank you for asking. You, When you talk about data and when you talk about serverless and flow, you smile. What got you interested in this particular line of work? How did you get your start? Well, um, I actually started developing websites as a full stack developer many years ago. And honestly, I just did it because it was really fun. You have sort of an instant gratification. You know, you, you deploy your code and magic, there it is, you know, on the website. And so I sort of got hooked and I never looked back. What a time to be in your field. When you look at, it is revolutionizing the way businesses operate and what we can do with data and the insights driven from it. Why did Capital One adopt a serverless first approach? Yeah, so serverless, uh, the serverless approach is just, it's sort of magical when you really think about it. it. You know, it used to be in a traditional sense that you would build everything from the infrastructure up to the application, but with serverless, we can really get rid of a lot of the infrastructure management tasks and some of the drudgery and, you know, running the engine activities that developers have to do and really move up the stack to the most exciting part of development where the developers really want to be, which is close to the customer, close to the business value. And so in many ways, you know, serverless gives us an opportunity to focus on that part of the work, which is the most exciting. They have described Capital One as being the bank that a technology company would build, right? So, and I, I love this as we talk about this. Um, you've spoken about why serverless, but I want to know about what the shift looked like, particularly because of the size of Capital One, and, and you're one of AWS's largest customers. Um, talk to me a little bit about uh, how you were able to utilize AWS offerings in your goals. Yeah, so our serverless journey started back in 2017. And you know, at first we just had to take a look at our infrastructure. We had a lot of monolithic applications and start to think about how are we going to break those down and how are we going to standardize our approach to moving in a serverless direction. And it was really in 2022, excuse me, 2021, when we made a big declaration. We are going to move toward a serverless compute platform. And so, again, we started to really focus on where we could get the most value, what applications were ready to be moved to serverless. And today, we are over one third of our applications running serverless. And that's you know either running on Lambdas, where we could just really extract the application logic and let AWS handle all the rest of the tasks and infrastructure management. Or in some cases, we're running Fargate, where we get the reliable platform, it's secure, it's scalable, you can pay as you go, uh, but you also, again, let Am Amazon handle all of the infrastructure management for you. So it's you know a really great opportunity, but it takes a big shift in the mindset of the engineers and a shift in the tools that we have to use um, to be able to really leverage the technology. You talk about a company like Capital One uh, for the size that it is and to make that decision in 2017, you know what we're going to do and to say, wow, we have so many verticals to tackle. We have so many different aspects of our business to, to tackle in this uh, sort of monolithic structure as you've described it. Then there's other companies that are small that are overwhelmed just by the sheer vastness of the cloud and being serverless. What advice would you give to companies starting out? I feel like if Capital One can do it, anyone can do it because of the size you were. Can you offer some tips, some things uh, businesses might want to consider, CTOs might want to consider? Yeah, so first thing would just be really understanding the principles of architecting in a serverless environment. Um, and so once you start to get up to speed on what that looks like, you start to have to make decisions. So for example, where are our workloads going to be applicable to Lambdas because they're event-driven and they work with the Amazon IAM policies. And so that you know usually leads you to a Lambda uh, implementation. Or maybe you have long running processes and those don't fit the Lambda model. And so then you're looking at Fargate and ECS 
Um, one tip there though is that there's some trade-offs to be made because you have to spend a lot more time configuring your v v VPCs, your firewalls, your security groups if you want to use Fargate. But for some workloads, that's really the right approach. Um, and then some other tips are just around, you know, you have to kind of rethink your standards. So how you're going to think about allocating memory, how you're going to think about uh, function timeouts, retry mechanisms, um, how are you going to um, manage error handling, and then, you know, really leveraging the tools that Amazon has to offer. So our teams use the SAM CLI, SAM stands for Server Application uh, Model, and uh, that CLI allows our developers to test lambdas in their local environment and do all their debugging before they deploy. Uh, we also use Amazon Cloud Development Kit that allows us to set up our infrastructure as code in Python. And then we also use things like Power Tools that uh, in, allows us to be able to uh, take you know, uh, events that are item potent and make sure that that is um, constrained because we run an active, active infrastructure. And so anyway, there's many tools um, that can be leveraged that you know, we've taken great advantage of and it's really made our serverless journey more seamless. So we definitely advise people to take advantage of those. What you're saying really showcases the fact that if there is a problem, there's also a solution, but one of the solutions that I think a company can benefit from is giving yourself grace with time. As you mentioned, you're not 100% of the way there yourself as a company, right? right? And so it's okay to start small and grow into it. You don't have to hit it uh, full force. Let me ask you finally, what are you most looking forward to here at AWS reInvent? Well, so I really love to go to the workshops. I love to bring a laptop and get a chance to be hands-on because in my role, you know, as a people leader and as an organizational leader, um, I don't get a chance to actually get into hands-on development on our code bases, but I can do that in my spare time. So um, I'm going to, I've signed up for a few of the workshops here and I'll be, you know, having a little fun with that this weekend. As a people leader, Kathleen Vigno, thank you so much for making the time to show us a little bit about what Capital One is uh, working on in the serverless space, and we will let you attend your workshops. Uh, thank you very much for speaking to us today. Yeah, sure, it's been great. Thank you so much. I'm Steph Strickland with GeekWire Studios.